Hello YouTube, this is an updated version to the streaming tutorial I made before using the Gamma X2 streaming machine. This version is going to go much more into depth, so hopefully you have a greater understanding of how to string your tennis racket using a two-piece string job. If you still have any questions at the end of it, just let me know down in the comments below, and I'll make sure to get back to you in a day or so. Also, please subscribe as I'll be adding a lot more value content in the future. Thanks a lot. Let's begin. All right, so as before, first thing you'd want to do is cut out and dispose of all your string. So just start from the center and then work your way going north, west, south, east, and so on. North, west, south, east. Keep working in this box pattern so that the tension remains even throughout the racket so you don't have too much pull on any one side. Uh, if I had a better pair of cutting scissors or whatever, it would be much easier, but this is all I got, so it's going to be a little slower for me. All right, so now that my strings are removed, I'm going to show you guys up close how to determine where to start your string. So if you look down here, I have one, two, three little pockets. So all together at one, two, three, four, five, six, six holes. What that what does that mean? That means that I want to start from the bottom. So I'll be putting both my string through the middle bottom. So one through here and one through here, and I'll be going through. I'll show you how that looks like with string. So what I want to do now is measure out mm -hmm. my string. I can put my racket down on the table, I can hold it, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm going to be doing a two-piece string job. So what I want to do is the mains first. The mains are the string which are going vertically. That's what you call the mains. So I'm going to measure it out. Uh, since there's this particular racket has 16 mains, I'm going to be measuring out 16 length, uh, full lengths of string. So one, two, three, and I'm going to be doing that 16 times, and I usually do one more for good measure. Four, Okay, so I measured out 17 full lengths across. So now what I'm going to do is cut off, cut off a piece of string. So that right there is going to be my mains. And I'll measure out my crosses later. So you want to place your racket on your stringing machine. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I'm going to find, make sure you have these two pieces laying on top of the stringer. Make sure these things are immovable. So does my racket fit? No. It does fit because I already set it up, but what you want to do to make sure if you're stringing different varieties of rackets is to use this tool to adjust these two so you can move them around like this. So you want to perfectly make it so you can position your racket so, so it's laying against them at this bottom and this top, like so. As you can see, it's, a, it's too big right now, so I got to make it less. By the way, this tool does come with the stringer. So now it's perfectly positioned and I'm going to adjust. All right, now what I want to do is place these things. You want to perfectly center your racket. There should be indicators, if not, just right the very top and the very middle bottom. It should be right in the center. You're going to be placing these on top.
and then you're going to tighten these things over them. You want the racket to be extremely stable. All right, so now since my racket has six holes, I'm going to be starting from the bottom. If your racket has eight holes on the bottom, you're going to be starting from the top. Go right down the middle. Okay, and now what you want to do is walk out your string so they're perfectly um, the same length. So this one is a lot shorter, so I'm going to pull it so they become the same length. Okay, and as you can see, I went through the top middle. And once your string are exactly the same length, you want to place your clamp, we call these flying clamps. You're going to place it close to the bottom, but you're going to leave enough space so that your next flying clamp can fit. As you can see, this other flying clamp, it has enough, a little bit of room to work with. All right. Okay, next thing you want to do is select your tension. You have this big metal weight, it can move around by using this tool. You want to tighten and adjust it. So what I want to do is tension my racket at 57 pounds. That's where I like it. So I'm going to go to 57. There's, a, there's numbers here indicated. Make sure you listen to the numbers on the top side, not the bottom side. So on the top side, I find where 57 is and the metal cylindrical, uh, whatever you call it, the edge closest to the racket. That's, that's what you're going to follow by. So you tighten that part at 57 pounds. So when I have it at 57, so now this is going to be my, what we call a drop weight and it's going to Tension the racket for me. So that's it. Now we can begin. Okay. First thing you'd want to do is pick up the drop weight and put it up. Next thing you want to do is take this blue thing and circle it so this flat edge is perfectly parallel with the ground or with the surface you're stringing on. In my case, it's a table, so I want this flat edge perfectly parallel with the table. So now what I'm going to do is take my string, wrap it around, all the way around, and go through. I'll show that again one more time. Take the string, wrap it around, and go through. Okay? However, first thing I want to do, since a regular electronic stringer, we can would be able to string this right away. But since we don't have an electric stringer and we're using a drop weight mechanism, we have to put the string through the next hole. and all the way through to the bottom. Pull it a little bit and then wrap it all the way around and just let your weight drop. Okay, since the weight's not perfectly parallel, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold as tight as I can to the blue thing, very tight, and you're gonna lift this up. You don't want any movement. So now I wanna a little, make incremental adjustments so that it becomes perfectly parallel with the table. All right, that looks perfectly parallel. So now, since I set this to 57, there's 57 pounds of force on my string. So I'm gonna take my next flying clamp and put it right right at the edge of uh, so it's touching this metal okay now that's it there's tension in this string right here I'm gonna lift this up all right this is all done I'm gonna take out my string and now I'm gonna put it through again the next 
I'm going to put my string through the next hole. Okay. Through the next bottom hole and the next top hole. And I'm going to, now I'm going to repeat that process all over. I'm going to take my drop weight. I'm going to perfectly center this. And I'm going to pull the tension. So just let it drop. Very important, do not push on the drop weight. So just let it drop softly. Okay, that wasn't, it's not perfectly parallel. So I hold this and I push up. Make micro adjustments. And I see the tension is pulled, so I take my uh, clamp closest to the far side, and I tension. Okay? I'm going to do one more string on this, one more main on the far side, and then I'm going to move on to the side closer to me. You want to, it's important to just don't do more than three on one side, so the tension stay relatively even on the frame. Okay, boom, that was a one shot and it worked perfectly. So I take my clamp, put it at the bottom. Boom, now the tension is holding. Lift this back up. Flip all the way around. And now I'm gonna start this other side. Okay, so what you're gonna do next is the same thing you just started, how you just started. You're gonna go through You're not going to tension this top because just to keep it the same way we started. Okay, and you're going to drop. Hold. Sometimes it's a challenge because the racket's in the way. That's the name of the game. Okay. And then move your clamp. You might want a, a little bit over tension. So you want a, a little bit over parallel as it's going to self adjust. So I'm a, right now, as you can see, the drop weight is a little bit over parallel. Place this at the bottom. Sometimes you gotta force it. Okay. And yeah, that's how I'm gonna continue and do the rest of my mains. All right, we've reached the point where I have to clarify something. So every single racket is going to have a different string pattern. For example, here I have six, six string from the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. After that, this top and bottom, these are crosses. So I have to skip them. So I'm going to skip this hole right here and the bottom hole the same way. So. What I mean by that is I go through the bottom and I skip and I go and I skip that one. That's one skip and then I do the same thing. I tension my string. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I skip one more time. So 
the way to figure out your pattern is if your racket's already pre-strung and you cut out all your string, you can tell which way the grommet holes are facing. So if it's facing vertically, that means it's a main. If it's facing horizontally, that means it's a cross. The other way to tell is just you can look online, you can just type in your racket model name and you can find the string pattern. Just type in on Google your racket string pattern. And uh, so that, those are basically the only two ways you can determine your string pattern. And it's very important to do the correct string pattern for your racket so it plays properly. Okay, so after you've done all your mains, you wanna, you're gonna wanna tie your knots. So you have this remaining string left. So what do you do with it? You find a hole that has space. So use your pliers. Sometimes it's not that easy. Okay. What I like to do is to use the closest main from the cross. So I just force it. I do that. Now to tie the knot, what you want to do is go over, under, and then, and then you want to go through. So over, under, and then through that loop you just made, and then you pull. And you want to do that twice, now in the opposite direction. So over, under, and through that loop you just made. And you want to do that twice. If you need to get that again, just rewind the video and just watch that again. Okay, after you've done that, you want to cut off your remainder string about half an inch. Leave about half an inch of string. That's less than half an inch, so that wasn't a very good cut. Try with the other one. All right, that'll do. Next thing we're gonna do is measure out the crosses. So this racket has 19 crosses. So I'm gonna do this 21 times. One, two, three. All right, now we're gonna to wanna to start our crosses from the top. It doesn't matter left or right side. With some rackets, it does matter. So you should find something that says cross start. Some rackets do indicate. But this particular racket doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna start on the right side. I'm gonna find a open hole. And I'm gonna do the same knot I use. It's not, there is another knot you should use to start your crosses, but I don't particularly like, like that knot. So I just use the same one. So I go one loop, pull, and two loop, pull. Okay. So now we have our knot secured and we can start our crosses. So what we're gonna do, is find the first open cross. We're gonna find the first open cross and weave all the way down. So what is weaving? You're gonna go up, down, up, down, weave it all the way through. Okay? And then finish off through the other cross, through the other side. Boom. So if I went over this one, I should be ending under that one. It's always gonna be opposite, or almost always. So now I wanna pull all the way through. 
Now, since we have a drop weight, again, we can only tension two strings at one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my next cross. Now, here's an important part. Since I went under here, that means I want to go over here. You always want to be opposite. So under, over, under, over, under, over. And you go all the way through. As you can see, there's opposites all the way down this way. And there's opposites all the way down this way. So under, over, over, under, under, over. And that's how you want a go to go the whole entire frame. So I'm going to pull through. And I'm going to tension. I'm going to tension the same way I did before. All right, so I pull tension and I tension it off. And now what I want to do is just go like that all the way through, all the way to the end. Just to clarify, you're only going to need one clamp for the crosses. So the whole way down, you just need one clamp. So what I do is I pull. And to prevent notching, I make sure I want to, you know, pull and move the string so there's no friction and the string doesn't burn. I pull my tension. Take my clamp. Clamp the next. Now you're not going to be able to go all the way to the frame as you were with the mains, but go as close as you possibly can. Okay, and then you're going to do that all the way down to the edge. All right, so I just clamped off the last string. And I'm just going to do the same tie off I always do, just find some open space. Go over under through one more time Thanks for watching. Please like the video and subscribe. Hey guys, I'll be posting a video within the next few days of me testing out this racket I just strung. So if you're interested, be on the lookout for that.